Yeah, that one. If that one zoomed in on me, you could shut it off right now. <laughs> I fucking hate seeing my face. Yeah, I uh, shaved a little too close today, so I don't <laughs> feel good about my neck waddle or something. Here we are with another episode of BS with TG with Ed Templeton, the one and only. Thanks for Hello. doing this. Oh. Appreciate it. Hi. <laughs> At some San Francisco contest? Maybe. Let me ask you this. Do you remember this? Because I do. We are in Spain and we were at a contest and I broke my ankle. Mm -hmm. And it was like probably 91 or 2 or... Okay. Brought me to the hospital and all that. And I was back at the hotel, kind of suffering, drinking everything out of the mini bar because I didn't have any painkillers. And uh, you, you came in and stopped by and to see how I was doing. You're like... Hey, I don't even remember this. Yeah, you're like, how, how are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm all right. At your and hotel room? Yeah. And I'm like, all right. Because we were all staying in the same okay. hotel. Yeah. We didn't really know each other. and But I thought that was really sweet of you to come by and just kind of check in and see how I was doing, you know? I thought, and, and so that always left an indelible sort of mark. That's interesting because I... Having a connection. I actually have no recollection of doing that. That's all right. And I think it's a... Uh, I've been talk I've been saying this a lot lately as jokingly, but I think it's there's something to it. The concussions are catching up. Oh yeah. With memory stuff. Yeah. As yeah. a photographer I shoot and I look at stuff and it, it's it's a really good memory jog. It's like a bookmark. I yeah. can go, Okay, yeah, I remember this this time now. But then when that photo's not in front of me, it's like stuff just goes away. Like when you said Spain, I had to struggle to think like where that even was and I have one memory jog of Spain in my head and it's like Mike V doing like a Japan over a hip in 91 could have been at the, the Olympic Stadium could have been the and I remember time. like guards with guns at the Olympic Stadium but yeah. that's all I can remember crazy that's all right I mean I don't my memory is complete shit going back to the concussion thing I read that you you've had like six six or seven times or something six that had put me in the hospital like I think as skaters we've all had a bunch yeah. of other ones too yeah. like I had one at some sacto contests where I got, you know, I went blind for a second. Oh, man. And we were driving to the hospital. And as we were driving there, like, the vision came back. And I was like, turn around. We're going back. You know, like, we just, you know, didn't go to the hospital. But for a second, I was like, I can't see. Fuck, let's go to the hospital. You know, and then, like, it, like, yeah, it turned to, like, starry tunnel vision. And then it kind of came back. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to go to the hospital now. So those things didn't even count. But there's been, six, like, six times when I've had to, like, go get an IV and stuff. Like, you start, you know, oh, concussion, yeah. vomiting. Oh, like dude. you need to get reset kind of thing with an IV and then like come back. So yeah, six of those to the point where I remember reading about hockey players, like on the third concussion, you're out kind you're of thing. Out, right. And I was just like, okay. So I went to see a neurologist guy and he did all these tests and was just like, of course they don't have anything to tell you. you know, it's just like, yeah. it's just like, it's, it's relative. Like, you know, like the next one, you could be a vegetable or you could have 10 more. It depends on your genetics and how you're built and like how bad the hits were and like, Whatever, so yeah, you, know, you can't tell. So so far, I've been, my brain's been there. It's it's like a selective memory thing, like whole chunks sure. will just go like be gone. Like I just don't remember stuff. Yeah, part of me likes it though. It's kind of like you don't have the baggage. It's just like okay, I'm just every day is kind of new, and you don't have this like whole history to think about. Terrible it's so many memory. road miles. But, so that's part of it. Like, like we toured so much. You meet like a billion people, and you've and like, it's the same. The shops all blend into one thing. All, and, like, it's, it's all It's the like same. skate shops and parking lots. I can't even. Exactly think of the amount of times that totally. I did that stuff and it's like so you know a kid will come up to me like hey we met in like Raleigh North Carolina 85 or something like in 91 or and it's just like yeah I don't, you're fuck, like man I'm sure we did yeah I, I don't even, like I really I can't think of anything that brings me back to that location you know of, maybe of course not and you have to sit there and think about like one thing that happened around that time and then you might be able to piece some stuff together but otherwise it's just gone and that's kind of weird because well, some people have that super rad memory where Phelps is like that, right? Like yeah. just 
you know how they talk about uh, the more you learn your narrow pathways, things you grow new um, synapses and all that stuff. And you're you're obviously like a reader and somebody who's interested in lots of things. And so therefore you're probably just constantly kind of investigating. And so you're building these new pathways, I'm sure, the whole time. And so yeah. it's probably keeping you in check. That sounds good. You know, and well, I mean, well, you're not like <laughs> sitting here going like like watching like Fox News, like. Oh uh, yeah, I feel like I'm a little yeah. guilty. Growing up in a generation without cell phones and stuff like that, um, yeah, where we had to commit stuff to memory, like all yeah. those tours we were talking about. Like, I mean, I would get like a glance at a map and have to just go, "I got this." Like, I can remember this city because I'm driving, and I just have to like remember like <laughs> totally. I, left, right, left, right on these crazy streets in this town I don't know and then now it's almost like I didn't grow up in that era because I'm of the generation where I can I want to know a fact I look it up yeah you know what's up with the breeding month like time of a duck or a squirrel <laughs> or something you know but then I literally forget it the minute I read it yeah. I read it yeah and then I'm going to talk to someone like three hours later and say yeah oh I just looked that up I can't I can't remember what it was like nothing gets committed to memory because you don't need it anymore because you, you have this little tool that gives you it. So there's no reason to like, there's no uh, incentive to like commit anything to memory anymore. Yeah. Because it's at your fingertips. I used to know every single phone number that was important, yeah. right? Just off the top of your head. Yeah. yeah I don't terrible. think I even know my phone number yeah. to my phone. <laughs> Reeling it back, when you were, you were writing for New, New Deal, yeah. right? And then you were on New Deal for a, a couple years, hot two, three years? Three, four years? Yeah, two years, two or three. And then you and then you went on to start your own thing, right? Was it television first? Yeah, I started a thing with Mike V called or TV, TV te television. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was television always, but, but Templeton Valley, right? He thought it was that. <laughs> I never wanted my name on it. That was short lived. Yeah. And then that basically spawned Toy Machine. But that period was super weird because it's like the low point in skateboarding. Yeah. It was like, kind of like big pants, small wheels. Yeah. You could be uncool for sure in skateboarding if you didn't do the right tricks kind of thing. I just, yeah, I went through a period where I would, I called everybody. I said, I want to start a company. Like I had this little taste of what it was like to have control and just wanted to keep doing that if I could. I called real, I called, I think I called everybody. They say like, I have writers, I have ideas, like want to do this. And you know, at that point it was just like such a low point that everyone's like, yeah, you know, like I don't yeah. Want to do this. That was the thing at that time, like when we were doing real, literally hand to mouth. Like you sell yeah. three hundred boards, and then you get the yeah. money, and then you can buy three hundred more. You know. So you went from the television thing, and then you connected with uh, Tomietto to start Toy Machine, or well, it's weird because Toy Machine started with Brad Dorfman. Oh, we went because you did TV with with Dorfman. Dorfman, then then we changed it to like television because we switched out of Dorfman to some other dude. This guy. Dean, uh, Dean Crystal, uh, who was doing like salvage clothing and like zero two shoes. Remember those like Velcro shoes? Yeah. That guy was like this business guy who was like, I'll, I'll do your company. So we like went to him for a little bit and then that fell apart quickly. And then um, I went groveling back to Brad Dorfman because after I called everybody, like there was no, yeah. you know, no, nothing happening. So I kind of went back to Brad and was just like, Look, like all that stuff that happened was was with me and Mike and stuff. Like I have this idea, let's just start start new. And he was like, Yeah, let's do it, let's start it. So we I did Toy Machine with Brad for one year. Brad was you know, Brad's kinda weird. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> That's one way to put it. I got a random call from Swank basically, mm -hmm. who was doing foundation already on his own. He like separated out of Rocco's whole thing and was doing it down in San Diego. I never knew this guy, you know. I mean, I knew of him, of yeah. course, but he's just like, yeah, I like what you're doing. Do you want to do Toy Machine here? And I was just like, yes, like immediately, like wow. go do it with skateboarders and stuff. Like, yeah. Because you'd go through the Vision Warehouse back then. It was just such a weird thing, like just stacks of weird stuff that he tried to, business ideas he had and like, I don't know, it was just, it was just strange. And he was always trying to like put his hand in it, like you should do this or that. Like put this naked lady in an ad, like what? Right. <laughs> like, you know, so then Swank, to his credit, and to this day, I mean, we had a handshake deal. And we still have a handshake deal. Wow, that's cool. That's Whereas amazing. just like, he, and he never said one thing ever. He's just like, this is your thing, you do it, I'm not going to like, and he never said, you have to do this or that, like, you know. So all the graphics, all the ads, everything has always just been, we have complete control. 
to the point so, where it's weird now. He's like, if I die, there's like nothing on paper. We need to like, we need to put this on paper <laughs> right. at this point. So we're kind of in the process of trying to figure out something, that's, something out. It's, it's so fucked. But, <laughs> oh man, it's so fucked that you're getting to that age where you have to start discussing that stuff. Yeah, I mean, he has got a daughter yeah. now and stuff. So he's just yeah. like, yeah. So yeah. He's like, if I were to die right now, you're going to walk up to my family and say like, I'm like part owner of this thing. And they're going to be like, where does it say that? <laughs> they're just going to be like, we don't know you. Yeah. You started in 94, right? Is that... Correct, 93, right? 93 with, with Dorfman with, and with 94, 94 with, with Swank. Yeah. Wow, that's you've been fucking, that's a long run. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> well, I, I, I really don't at this point. I think... It's just something to do. It's, you, like, but you it's made, my day job. You, yeah, you made it happen though. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was, I don't know. There was a time okay, that you were working for Big Brother, right? I didn't ever work or, there, but I you just wrote, hung out. I did some articles for them, yeah. yeah. I basically was good friends with uh, Tremaine and Cliver. Yeah. And just loved the idea that they, you know, Rocco's whole operation there was fun. Yeah. Like, it was just, like, kind of chaos and, like, let's just do fucked up shit. Yeah. You know, they had, like, a putting green and, like, just weird. You know, so it was just, like, a thing, like, let's go up to He, he was, like, the first startup f fucking company of model totally yeah. yeah and like so we totally. me and deanna would just go hang out at the big brother offices and shoot the crap with sean and like and jeff tremaine and like go skating around there and stuff and just i don't know it's just like a thing life was weirder like you just stopped by like i don't do this anymore i don't just stop by people's houses anymore well but you have I, a lot more going on and you're a lot more responsibilities as you get older but we used to do that stuff like sure. let's just go hang out with this guy yeah. like and you just show up like oh would come here and spend the night all the time you know like <laughs> yeah just couch touring as a side effect of that, I would just be like, hey, I'm going to Europe. Like, I'll write the article. <laughs> you know, like, I'll yeah. write, it'll be fun. Like, I'll just write it from a skater's perspective or something. Or How did the Ed Ed's Haters Club thing come to be? Like, what was that? That started because I wrote, I think I wrote something in, uh, it was either in Big Brother. Didn't they do a snowboard magazine? A snowboard it? magazine. Blunt, I think it was. I think I wrote something that they put in Blunt. Yeah. And it was just making yeah. fun of snowboarders. Because at that point, snowboarders were like, we're wacky. It was like Dr. Seuss hat. Yeah. Pierce your nose. Like, yeah. And, uh, that was, that was when there was certain skate companies or, or people in the, in the community who were kind of wanting to get into snowboarding and into the industry because right. there was really Branching crossing over. Yeah. Cause we had a lot of skaters going who snowboarded too. Right. And it was a little getting a little weird. Yeah. There's some weirdness happening. Yeah. And so, I mean, it was mainly just like the whole article was just a poke at, the prototypical snowboarder at that yeah, one sure. period where it was just like, yeah. we're wacky, like tribal tat yeah. and pierced nose and tie my goatee green and like yeah. wear a Dr. Seuss hat. Yeah. Kind of like a, a poke at that. But then the article came out and I think by chance I described one particular guy who was then after me, I right, heard. Right. Like this guy, I forget the guy's name even, some famous, like a big pro snowboarder guy oh, okay. at the time. So I got back to me like this guy wants to kick your ass because he thinks that was directed right at him, you know, and I was just like, fuck. So I think it was a combination of that. And then I wrote an, an article about the contests in Germany mm -hmm. and I like made fun of Germany. Yeah. And that's, I think that was really where it started. They got a bunch of hate mail, like fuck Ed talking shit on Germany or something yeah. like that. Because I think I had a bad experience one year with all this German stuff that happened. And then I think it was like Tremaine or... Or Carney's idea to like, let's start a He Man Haters Club because we got this hate mail. And once you offer it, once you offer it, like you once you yeah, put yeah. it out there, like, hey, send hate mail to Ed Templeton, yeah. like, then it's just like, oh yeah, fuck this a guy. Like, fucking... let's just do this for fun. Yeah. But I think I've said before, most of them came from one guy. So it all, it would just all became it just a joke, basically. It was right? always I mean, a joke from yeah, the start. Yeah. yeah. Until I like, until some of the letters got a little weird, like, oh, like the ones about we're gonna kill you if we see you kind of thing and like rape your wife. It was just like. I mean, I still think I didn't take them that seriously, but yeah. but it was like I was kind of like, let's not do this anymore. Like, I don't know if I like offering hate mail to myself. But sure. That's typical <laughs> Big Brother approach. I was getting made fun of just as much by them too. You know? Oh fuck yeah! Like I was, I Vegan, had a, they, they did a little like, thing about uh, my paintings oh. that like Tom uh, Earl Parker did, and I was kind of like, any press is good press. Like I got some coverage about my art, which is cool. I think I looked at it the other day. It's like he's just fully making fun of it. Cliver admitted to me, he's just like, yeah, your paintings were fucking terrible. He admitted this because my last show, he was actually like, oh, I really like your paintings. And he's like, I'll have to tell, I have to admit, like, your early work, I, we were all like laughing at you and stuff. Because Tremaine was like a really good painter. Yeah.
look like you're um, selling large quantities of art. <laughs>